Dear sir and all the participants, we have organized this lecture as a part of the disaster preparedness and response plan of our hospital. First of all, I would like to introduce our guest speaker for today's lecture, Dr. Jagat Vijayaratna, acting consultant Rapitia. Thank you very much, sir, for accepting our request to conduct this session. Thank Dr. Ganaka Senaratna, sir, consultant physician from Teaching Hospital Karapitia, for his contribution for this session. Also, Dr. Ravind Abhisurya, deputy director. DGH Ambili Pitya for his immense support for this lecture and all the academic sessions. For the participants, uh, you can ask questions, put them in the chat box. Without further ado, I'd like to invite Sir to start the session. Over to you, Sir. Okay, thank you very much. And good morning to all of you. And I would like to um, thank for selecting this topic and showing interest in uh, knowing about disaster management. Right, so what I'm going to uh, discuss today is about in an important topic in disaster management, uh, disaster medicine, right? It's for um, how to manage a major, major incident, right, in your hospital. Um, so at the end of this lecture, I hope you will be able to manage this situation, right? So imagine that you are the on call, I mean, in charge medical officer or consultant in, the, in your unit, and you are getting a call from a the police station that there was an accident in the motorway highway and you are getting some casualties 10 to 15 critical ill patients to your ed right so you have half an hour to prepare for this incident and how would you prepare for this incident what are the actions that you will, you will take before the arrival of the casualties and after the arrival of the casualties so the, this is the task that we are going to discuss today Right. So before going to, to our major stars, I would like to discuss about the basic uh, things about uh, major incidents, right? Uh, theory stuff. Yeah. So starting with the definitions, right? You, it's better to know what is a disaster first, right? So disaster is the event that overwhelms the resources of the region or the location in which it occurs, right? Basically, this disaster is something that because because of demand supply mismatch right a disaster to one hospital may be not a disaster to another one right so it depends on the time which it happened whether it is a daytime or night or and nature of the injuries and number of casualties right type of the incident like that and um, the today our topic that is a major incident right so major incident is an incident where the location number and severity or type of the casualties require extraordinary resources where you can't uh, that incident with your normal resources you need some additional support right uh, remember that every major incident is not a disaster right um, is it clear right so major incident is where you need extraordinary resources additional resources and then coming to the definition of a mass casualty incidents, right? The mass casualty incidents is an event in which you get a lot of casualties, right? Num it's a number. You get as a, several number of, I mean, uh, multiple numbers of severely injured casualties. Hmm? So mass casualty incidents is type of a major incident, right? And major incident is not always a disaster. So we'll talk about what are the types of categories of major incidents. There are three categories of major incidents, right? First category is it's a, actually a mass casualty incidents where you get large number of casualties to your ED hospital, right? And number two, uh, category two of the major incident is where you don't get large number of casualties, but you get um, um, casualties which, may, which might impact your normal activities. Several casualties, it might be only few casualties, but those casualties may need a lot of resources from your ED. Like you might have to intubate several people at the same time, right? There can be some, a few cardiac arrests at the same time, right? And like uh, poisoning, right? Event of a um, uh, to poison patients at the same time, right? Like that. And category three, 
uh, of the major in incident is an internal incident, right, within the hospital, like uh, building collapse, right, maybe a carbon monoxide poisoning, something incident which happened inside your hospital, right. These are the three categories of uh, major incidents which you can have, right. So these are the three categories of major incidents, category one, two, and three, right. Category one is a mass casualty incident. Category two is where you don't get mass, casual, mass number of uh, casualties, but the casualties coming to the ED require extraordinary resources, right. Category three is an internal incident inside your hospital. Coming to the mass casualty incidents where the where you get a number of casualties, there are two types, right? Conventional mass casualty incident and CBRN emergency, right? Conventional mass casualty incidents are like, as I said before, building collapse, road traffic accidents, right? Earthquakes, right? Um, um, landslides like that. And um, which, which are going to talk today, right? And CBRN emergencies, chemical, biological, radioactive, and nuclear emergencies, right? Um, which, uh, which we need a separate approach, right? Uh, during the uh, civil war in Sri Lanka, we were concerning about chemical and biological emergencies, but we don't have such a threat at the moment, right? So we will, for the moment, we'll talk about conventional mass casualty incidents. Right. Then it's better to have some idea about this cycle. This is called disaster management cycle, right? So in this disaster management cycle, we are going to touch on preparedness and response, right? To our uh, mass casualty. And um, the recovery page, I mean, I will touch a bit about the recovery page and mitigation is actually uh, something we need to do to uh, reduce the uh, effect of the next, I mean, uh, incident, mass casualty incident, right? So by, for example, improving the infrastructure, right? If it is a road traffic accident, so the measures to take prevent road traffic accident, improving the quality of the roads and road signs, right? and uh, implementing laws to prevent road traffic accidents like that. So mitigation part is something um, higher in the hierarchy. So it has to be done uh, in the management level. So what we can do is we can, we can discuss about the preparedness and the response, right? right. Coming to the preparedness in a major incident, right? So um, ideally before we get the message about a major incident, we need to have a major incident plan, right, to each of the institute. Each hospital should we have their own tailored major incident plan according to their resources and space, right. So ideally, each hospital need to have their own major incident plan where, where it says, okay, so where are we going to set up the triage? Where are we going to set up the decontamination area, and where are we going to uh, where, are, where are we going to manage the critically resuscitation patients, resus patients, right? And where are the major um, uh, so where are we going to manage the major patients and minor patients, and the relatives rooms and uh, security office, media location like that, right? So in the major incident plan, everything is there, right? Um, including a major incident cupboard, right? And then uh, action cards, everything is there. So uh, we, I will come to that one by one, right? And um, so uh, not, I mean, just having a major incident plan is not enough, right? So you have to read it, the people who are involved in, in the major incident, especially the ED staff and theater staff, right? And trauma surgeons, so you have to read your hospital major incident plan and get familiar with that, right? Because otherwise there will not be enough time to read it because it will be a, a big uh, document, right? You have to read it well before arriving, uh, uh, having a major incident, right? And then you have to practice it, right? You have to run a simulation scenario. So you can, uh, you have to arrange some uh, sims, right? I'm, uh, so, I mean, otherwise the mind, especially nursing staff and minor staff, 
they need to know what to do in a major incident. So you have to train them. So you need to have a major incident plan and you need to read it and you need to practice it, right? So when you talk about major incident plan, there are mainly three parts. The core major incident plan, which contains the things I have told you before, right? Locating the places, right? And uh, about the major incident cupboard, right? And uh, then action cards. Action cards are the cards which says what to do. To different group of people right for the triad nursing officer what to do triad doctor what to do then majors doctors what to do right so everything is mentioned in that action card so i will show you one card as example uh, during my le uh, lecture right then specialist plans right to deal with in special situations right so I like in a cbr in, um, incident or when there are specific lot of children coming right like that right special specialist plan for specific uh, things like bomb blast burns right special ones right is it clear so uh, that is preparedness then uh, we will talk about the triage right so triage the aim of triaging is to achieve the greatest chance of survival to the greatest possible number of casualties right it's not just saving one or two people, right? We have we, we have to try to save maximum number of people possible, right? So that's the aim of our triage, right? So it is a continuous process. So it starts in the field, right? It's called primary triage. I'm going to talk about in detail later. So we do the triage at the site of the incident. And then the, they have been brought, bring patients to the ED. Then at the ED, we do another triage, secondary triage. Right? And then if there's a delay in the treatment, we need to retriage patients. Sometimes these triage categories can be changed, right? There are a few categories, P1, P2, P3, and P0. So you can, these patients, I mean, can deteriorate or can better. So, right? So you need to retriage if there's any delay in the treatment, right? Then um, triage is an important place, right? So you need to allocate your senior staff senior staff members to the triage, right? So one of the senior doctor or senior consultant and a senior nurse, right? Because all the treatment depending on that triage. If you don't triage properly, right? There are something called under triage and triage. Both can affect the outcome of your management, right? So uh, one problem in Sri Lanka is over triaging. You know, after accident, right, especially there are something or blow blast or motor traffic accident. The people who can walk will come quickly to the ED, right? Not like in other countries, because they, they will grab a prior show or a, a vehicle passing by and they will come to the ED quickly. So people will not touch the critically ill patient. They are afraid to carry them to the ED. So they will wait until the police ambulance service arrive there. P3, that is a walking wounded people. If you fill up the OED with those walking wounded people, then there will be not enough space to the critical patient, right? So be careful not to over triage in an emergency, right? So ideally, the walking wounded patient should go to a minor injury unit or somewhere where you can um, assess them leisurely, right? Um, so, when a patient comes to ED, you have you are not doing the registration stuff like in normal patient, right? You don't. You just give them a number, right? You later then number and a file, right? Then uh, you put a tag on uh, the patient and you use that number until the situation is calmed down. Then you can literally register those patients like in, um, in a normal routine registration thing. Right. Um, right. So um, then, um, talking about the primary triage and secondary triage, right? There are different triage tools for that. So as I tell you before, primary triage is a thing that it, ha it that should be done in a um, scene of the incident at the scene, right? 
So it should be, I mean, it should uh, the people should be able to do their triage, right? And it should be a rapid one. You should not take more than 30 seconds per patient. Right? So the most commonly used uh, um, tool is triage C for the primary triage. I will show it in the next slide, right? And for the secondary triage, that is the hospital triage, you use triage short. Right? And it should be done by a clinician, people as medical experience because there are things that you need, such as like blood pressure and ECS in secondary triage, right? So um, the primary triage and secondary triage, we categorize patients into four categories, right? Red, yellow, green, black, right? So red is called P1, right? P1 is immediate life-threatening um, uh, patient, uh, patients with immediate life-threatening conditions who need immediate treatment right these patients can't wait right then yellow is the people who can be wait right treatment can be delayed right for example the person patients with burns right so um that's no acute life-threatening problems like airway problems right and uh, severe, uh, I mean, hypertension, like, like bleeding, like that. So this patient can wait. Right? And the third category, P3, is minor, minor injury patients. Right? They are walking wounded. They have minor abrasions, bruises, and stuff. Right? So these patients have to wait. There's no emergency for them. Right? The fourth category is the black one, P0. So those categories, they uh, they actually we consider as dead, right? So we don't do CPR, no CPR in a uh, uh, mass casualty incident, right? So red is can't wait, yellow can wait, green have to wait, right? Dead, no resuscitation. Right, I hope it is clear. So you need to be aware about these three categories. As soon as you see the color, you need to identify these patients. Okay, red. Okay, I need to urgently treat this patient like that. These categories can change. Right, yellow patient can become red in reassessment. Okay. All right. So uh, talking about the primary triage, that is the uh, on-site triage at the scene. Right, it's called triage Z. Right. So initially, we see whether the patients are having any catastrophic hemorrhage. Right. For example, arterial bleeding from a fracture site. Right. If there's any catastrophic hemorrhage, it's priority one. You have to apply tourniquet and transfer the patient urgently to an ED. Then you have to check whether the patient is walking. You can ask, OK, the people who can walk, can you move to one side? Then those patients, walking wounded paper, can wait until other patients are transported to the ED, right? Then you check whether the patient, uh, uh, the, the, the people who can walk go to a site and other people who can't walk, then you, you can check whether the, those patients are breathing, right? If there's no breathing, even after simple airway maneuvers like a jaw thrust, right? Then you call that patient dead. You don't check for pulse, right? And um, you, you can't manage the airway in, at the scene, right? If you can't manage with simple airway maneuvers, you can't give CPR, ambu ventilation in that scene, right? So unfortunately, we have to consider those patients at dead. You are not touching that patient, okay? Then if there's breathing, you can ask whether the patient respond to voice. Right, verbal, right. Um, even there, if there's no uh, uh, vocal response, then you have to consider it as a priority one, right. If the patient has some vocal response, then you have to check what respiratory rate, right. If the respiratory rate is below twelve or more than twenty-three tachypnea or no, bradypnea, then you have to consider as again priority. There are some be, should be some reason for tachypnea, right? right? Lactic acidosis, right? Bleeding, right? And uh, then 
if the respiratory rate is in between 12 and 23, then check for his heart rate. If there's, if there's tachycardia, then priority two, right? Uh, um, if the heart rate is, uh, uh, then if it is not less than 100, if tachycardia, then priority one, right? If the heart rate is not uh, less than 100, priority two, it means there's no tachycardia, right? Tachycardia may be because of uh, bleeding, no? Hemorrhage, hemorrhage is shock. So this is triage C. So this can be done even by a, a non-medical person, right? Just for checking whether there's any bleeding, patient can walk, breathing, and respiratory rate and heart rate, okay? The next triage is the secondary triage, that is triage short. We basically use three criteria for this uh, categorization, that is GCS, respiratory rate, and blood pressure, right? According to the values, in certain values, we give certain scores, right? Then we have to calculate the total score, and then uh, calculate, uh, see whether it is a priority one, P1, P2, or P3, right? Or dead. Right. So uh, when we consider pediatrics, right, there are different uh, types of um, um, triage tools. Most commonly used tool is something called jump start in pediatrics, right? So um, again, it uses some criteria like whether the patient is walking, breathing, and respiratory rate and pulse, right? But different values. Okay. Then I would like to talk about um, how to report a major incident, right? This is very important. So when you take the handover, I mean, uh, when you take, answer the call from a major incident, right? You have to ask all of these things, right? It's very important to take a proper uh, reporting of a major incident. This is called methane report. Okay. So uh, if something is missing, you have to specifically ask, okay, uh, this, uh, how about this? How about that? Like that, right? So methane is a mnemonic. So M is for major incident, whether it is declared or standby. We will talk about the meaning of declared and standby later, right? And then you have to ask the exact location of the incident. Right? So it will give us an idea about the ET expected time of arrival and what are the difficulties to travel to our hospital, right? Like that. And what are the mode of transport, right? Then you have to ask about the type of the incident, right? For example, whether the chemicals, poisons involved, then we have to take special measures, right? Decontamination and wearing special PPI, like that, right? Then about the hazards, right? What are the hazards they are, whether they are the gases involved, right? Nuclear, right? Like that. Then access. Uh, so how are they going to transport the patients to our hospital? What is the route and method, whether they are transport, right? Ambulances, right? And um, uh, using boats, whatever, right? And you have to ask what is the number of casualties, expected number of casualties, roughly. What is the number, right? If they can't have an idea, if it is a uh, mass casualty, then you can at least ask what are the type of P1 and P2 casualties, severely injured patients, what are the number? Because they can't count the whole uh, group. Of then you have to ask whether any emergency services present at the site, right? Ambulance services or any doctors, right? And whether if not, whether they require any support from our hospital, whether we need to send some ambulance services for them. Um, I hope you understand up to now, no? If there's anything, I mean, I, I can't see any um, questions here. Please uh, raise your voice and tell me, right? Okay. Then uh, coming to that uh, standby thing and declared thing. So notifications of a major incident can be four types. First is major incident standby, right? For, um, so it's like this. So imagine that there's a, um, uh, we would say there's a um, burning, I mean, a, a hotel burn, right? There's a burning in, in a hotel, burn in a hotel, right? 
so the police says okay there there is a um, for um, flat building is on um, fire right so there you you will, you might get some casualties so they will inform the ed that you might get some casualties there's a house uh, fire right you might get some uh, patients with burns to your ed right this is just to inform you that you might get some patient that is so you have to set your institute on standby right so get ready to set up for the response right then after some times the police may enter to the premises and fire brigade right fire then they will find okay there were no people inside the house right so it means uh, there are no, no there are no you will not get any casualties right then you can actually cancel the major incident right so after assessment of the scene then you will get the message to cancel the standby message right or else when the uh, fire brigade people or police enter the uh, premises they will find okay there are about 20 victims of the burn right grade 1 grade 2 severe burns then they will inform you okay there are some major incidents then you can declare it as a major incident okay is it clear so just after the incident stand by we don't know whether we are getting the casualties or not so if we are getting casualties we can declare it as a major incident and we can go to full response to the major incidents right if there's no casualties then we can cancel the major incident stand by command okay then the what is major incident stand down so stand down um, is something called i mean after receiving all the patients to the ed right and after clearing up all the critical illness, right um, after sending the patients to theaters boards and discharging the other patients and when we think that we can get back into the normal routine admission procedure we can stand down the major incident right so that decision should be taken by the um, higher people right in the hierarchy so it should be a, a collective discussion with all the stakeholders and then they will take that decision right you can't take that decision in your own okay so that is stand down right so you need to know these terms what is major decision stand by declare cancel and stand down okay right so uh, this stand by this uh, command it can be done by the external source as we can uh, told uh, as i discussed with you before right so you can get a standby message from uh, the police or fire brigade right or something like that but you don't have to wait for an external source of order sometimes you can um, uh, give this standby message by internal sources, right? For example, you can self-declare, okay? I mean, you are, for example, in the tsunami, right? If you are watching the TV, if the TV is showing, okay, there's a tsunami hitting the northern coast of Sri Lanka, you don't have to wait to the, uh, for the call from the police, right? You have to, you can activate the standby command, right? From your institution itself. So if there's a message, okay, there's going to be a tsunami, or there's going to be a landslide, you can decide, okay, we are going to act, um, be on standby side, right? Because stand standby sometimes in other in other countries, you uh, when there's a mass casualty incident, you keep all the close by hospitals standby, right? But you only sometimes you might need you might not need all the hospitals sometimes uh, you might the closest hospital might be enough to accompany all the patients uh, i mean to uh, treat all the patients in that mass casualty incident right but you keep the other hospital standby in case that hospital can't manage those patients then you have to transfer the other patients that's why you keep all the other hospitals stand by in the emergency, right? Um, right. So 
Uh, for example, if there's a mass casualty in Mathara, right. some bomb blast or something, your hospital might also keep standby in case they can't manage the patients there. Okay. Right. So um, that is how you activate the standby command. Right. Then we will come to um, we'll have an idea about the command structure in a mass casualty incident. There are three commands, right? Gold, silver, and bronze, right? Gold is a strategistic command, right? It is an overall control, right? It, has, it, it is usually done by a chief executive. They plan all the response to that uh, incident, right? So they will plan how to manage the resources, how, how to find financial um, support, right? How to plan the recovery, right? They will liaise with the media, right? And then they will um, uh, instruct the silver command, right? Uh, tactical, that is a tactical command, how to um, manage this mass casualty, right? Then silver command, the tactical command, take the decision, right? About the staff deployment and use of resources. So which unit need uh, the most of the staff and what are the units, I mean, uh, lacking staff and lacking resources, right? Then they will uh, distribute the resources and staff to that uh, units and they will delegate roles and they will communicate with the broads, that is operational command, right? So the broads operational command is actually the people who are actually uh, running the clinical scenario. For example, the ED, right? ETU. They are the operational command, one of the operational command. Then the, the surgical star, um, operating theater, another one, right? The surgical uh, wards, and again, operation, bronze command. Right? So in the ED, if you are the in charge consultant, you can be the operational command, right? And if there's no in charge consultant or something, if, you, if there's only um, in charge MO at that time. So you can be the bronze command until the proper operational command arrives. So you have to take the responsibility, right? If you get the call in the middle of the night, so in charge medical officer is the bronze command, operational command at that time, right? Until they set up tactical commands and statistic things, right? So they will set up later, right? So at our level, we have to be aware about the bronze command, operational command. Okay. Then I talked you, uh, told you about action cards. So this is an example of action card. So different action cards mention what are the roles of different people. So this is action card for a doctor, right? So it will say, okay, this doctor need to stay at this area, majors, resuscitation area, minors and prior and what are the your plan what are the things that you have to do right like that so you have to uh, have an action card with you and this is also another term right i just want to emphasize about surge capacity right? surge capacity is the capacity which you can i mean expand your capacity ability to manage a sudden or prolonged increase in overall healthcare demand Right? How can you expand? Right? How how much you can expand your staff? And how what is the maximum capacity of your staff? Right? And how can um, uh, you um, in, um, increase the uh, space? Right? What are the spaces available to increase the? I mean, uh, uh, to take more patients to your department. That is called surge capacity. So you need to know how to, um, what is the maximum surge capacity in your in your unit and how to increase the surge capacity in case of an emergency. Okay, right. For, ex um, for example, staff, right? You need to have all the contact number, emergency contact numbers of your doctors, consultants, officers, right to call them in case of an emergency right you need to have their contact numbers right. 
and sometimes you might need additional support from other units. Right, so that is the theory part. So um, we'll talk about how to manage this incident. Right? So after knowing all this theory stuff, right, you need to we need to act practically, right? How to manage this situation? Now you are getting a uh, few casualties, right? Like maybe a team of critical patients to your team, right? So expect the time of arrival, maybe take a half now. You have to prepare for what I'm going to do. Okay, so these are the things that you have to do. First and foremost thing, right? First, you have to confirm whether it is the correct information, right? Whether somebody is just bullying you. I don't know, no? This, so you have to call back, right? So when you get the call, okay, somebody will call and say, okay, I'm DIG, so and so, I'm from the police. So this is to inform you regarding the major incident, right? So you take all the details of that person who is informing you that this incident, their name, rank, and their contact number. Then you have to call them back to see whether it is correct. You call the police station, not the private number. You have their, you don't call the mobile number. Take the official um, um, direct contact number and then call the police station and confirm whether this message is correct. Right? And ask for a full methane report, right? So the first patient, person who is informing you the, about the incident may not know about the full methane report. So call them back and get uh, the full methane report, ask whether there are some major incidents standby or uh, major incident, uh, whether you need to activate the major incident full activation, right? Uh, then, then ask about the exact location right type of the incident and about the hazard and what are the access roads available what's the mode of transport of those, of those patients right and number of casualties and exact uh, sorry where the ambulance services are present in that place so ask for the full methane report and whether they uh, and also don't forget to ask whether they need any help to that location whether we need to send some uh, team of our unit, right? Then after confirming, right? Then you have to declare the main thing, main thing, right? Uh, then uh, gather the whole, I mean, uh, uh, the people in, on the floor, right? And tell them, okay, now we are getting a major incident. So I'm going to declare the major incident, right? So this is the incident and we will get these sort of patients, right? We have to get ready for that. Right. Uh, first thing is we have to inform the director, then all the stakeholders, on call consultants, anesthetic, blood bank, laboratory, radiology, right? Even the blood bank, if there's only one name more available, they need to get some additional support. So you need to inform all the people, even the laboratory, right? Radiographers, everybody need to be there by the time that major incidents arrive. Right. Then you, you can tell them, okay, I will be there. Indian commander or the drones command for the moment. Then you have to take the necessary measures. It, uh, we'll see what are the measures we have to take. First, space, right? S space, staff, and staff, right? Space, you have to set up the triage area. There will be, it will, it, it will be mentioned in your hospital disaster plan, right? So you have sometimes that space might be now using for something else, right? You, they, they might be watching the trolleys in that area. Right? So you need to set up the triage area, right? For the mass casualty, two triage areas: one for accept ambulance patients and one for walking the people. Right? Then set up a decontamination area if it is a CPR in this chemical biological nuclear something. Right? You need to decamp even in poison, right? Then you have to discuss with the nursing officer in charge, right? How to utilize non clinical areas. Right? For example, you, you might need um, 
sometimes you might need staff room, you know, resting room, right? And um, lecture room, like theaters, right? And uh, restrooms, right? And um, sometimes uh, dining room, same thing. You have to take even corridors, right? You need to put some trolleys in the corridor and you have to increase the capacity, space, right? Then not only you increase, you get additional space, but you also have to clear the space, right? So you have to discharge all the minor person, people, right? You can give some OPD pits and discharge the people who can be discharged from the hospital, right? And remove the, the patient in the clinic or next day one time. You can give an appointment to come back. Mm -hmm. Then you can divert the minor patients to the other hospitals nearby hospitals, right? You can tell them, okay, so this is that you uh, just need patients who are coming for minor injuries like abscesses, right? INDs, simple things, suturing. You can ask them to go to a district hospital or something else to get it done. You can tell them, okay, if you stay here, you can, you might have to wait for day to get it done. You can come, go to another hospital, right? Then um, clear the ED and admit the ED patients to wards, HU, and ICUs. Right? Here are the old places bed and major space. Right? Then coming to the staff, right? So first you have to locate the teams, right? You have to delegate roles. Okay, you have to go to the majors, you have to go to the track, you have to go to the minors, right? Uh, take the action cards and get ready uh, with, to accept the patients. Right? All right, so then different, I mean, um, stations have should have a different in charge person, right? Then they have to debrief their staff. What are the actions they have to do, right? Then inform the uh, surgeons and ICU anesthesia, ask them to get ready, right? Then try to get additional staff, right? For the people who are on leave, right? Who are off, right? Ask them to come back if possible. Right, and then you need to get support from the police and security because there will be a lot of people coming to see their relatives, and it can be a terrorist attack. Sometimes terrorists might come into the hospital to kill the people, other people, right? So you need proper security to manage the crowd. Right? So ask the police to come to support and uh, get additional support from the security. Right? So arrange staff breaks, food, right? You have to stop, right? You have to take additional uh, food supplements, food drinks. And then you have to, most importantly, think about the family members of the staff. Right? Some staff members might have some family members affected by the uh, disaster, right? So try to address the issues also. Try to find their family members, right? Give them additional support like that. Then uh, talking about the staff, right? Usually, ideally, you have a disaster cupboard which have all the documents inside. I mean, the um, um, action cards, right? The files, one file to one person. Right? Then you have equipment and book bag uh, and uh, uh, other stuff like emergency stuff, stocking cupboard, see, sir, uh, like a fine, you know, sir, uh, sir, like a product like that, right? So, ideally, you need a major incident uh, cupboards, right? And there are separate major incident boxes so, containing different type of medication and other stuff, right? You have to get ready with springs, right? And uh, medications, and you have to bear personal protective equipment before the uh, arrival of the disaster, right? Get ready with uh, gloves, uh, face mask, boots, right? Aprons, gloves, face masks, and face shields like that, right? Uh, right, so then, uh, so the basic principles, there are certain basic principles in a disaster, right? So you have to concern about the security, right? So you have to uh, lock or um, other entrance, right? And you need to have only two entrances, one to emergency uh, ambulances and one to walking on wounded patients, right? 
then um, as doctors you have to wear identity cards so everybody should know who are you and what are you doing right so sometimes otherwise other other people come and pretend like doctors they will wear a stretch stretch and will come come and see the patients and they might be terrorists we don't know right so every person need to have identity identity card right and uh, police should be there with the security right and you need to make sure that i mean press statements are given by the uh, designated people right don't give and give don't go and give press statement right if then you will we have have to face some uh, medical legal issues again later right you should i mean if you give false statement and if you give statement without authorization from the director you will be in trouble right then uh, you need to set up a ideally uh, there should be a special place for the relatives right then uh, there will be another person to give the information to that relatives otherwise those relatives will go into the ed and try to find the, uh, their pay, uh, relatives in the ed right you have to minimize the staff in the ed so there should be a some per person to communicate with the relatives and the patients right he can run here and there uh, so take only one relative to the that relative's room one relative and then uh, you can communicate with that relative right and uh, then um, before starting the incident you can delegate roles okay you can't go and here and there and check what what they are doing right you can delegate one person as a in charge to the research majors and to the uh, company minors and relatives room right then you can ask them okay you need to come back and tell me okay after uh, 30 minutes or 15 minutes you have to come back and tell me what's going on there update right like that then um, you have to ask from the staff okay do you have any any questions anything unclear about the situation so we are going to do like this right so do you have any any questions no then you can summarize okay so what we are going to do is like this so we are going to set up the triad there right decontamination area there and this is our this is this is where we are going to resuscitate the patient resuscitation patients then this is our major patients this is our minor patient location right and this is our relatives room and the police will be here and the security will be there right and uh, you guys are going to be uh, the in charge person to different locations and you need to come back and tell me about the plan right and then these are the action cards right so do you have any questions if you have any question please let me know right then you have to uh, wear the personal protective equipment and wait for arrival of the casualties don't panic okay so basically that's how you prepare for the um, emergency right so after arriving on the emergency always remember right so regularly observe the patients right uh, then uh, retriage sometimes as i said you earlier this uh, triage category can change if the patient is waiting for a long time a green patient can become a yellow one yellow patient can be a red one p1 so if there is any delay you have to ask one of the senior nurses or senior clinician to retriage the patients go and check whether the all the patients are okay right then restock the staff right medication right you need to allocate one nurse to check whether the medical supplies are enough right uh, uh, the drug medications um, collars splint right um, so you need to restock right and then you have to reevaluate situation to see whether you have to get a need you whether you need additional support from the other hospitals right uh whether you need uh, uh, uh whether you can stand down from the incident right so have idea reevaluate the situation right how's the situation in the site right? at the site whether there are any more patients there casualties there whether they have managed to transport all the patients to the ed right so like that reevaluate the situation you need to uh, have an idea 
about what's going on now, right? Right. Then, at the after managing the situation, always think about the psychological um, side of the uh, your staff. Some staff members may be shocked. They might have uh, uh, been a post-traumatic get end up with the post-traumatic stress disorders, right? They after seeing this mass casualty, that they might be get develop some depression, right? Other psychological problems, right? Their staff members, their family members may be affected, right? Always think about the psychological support during the incident and after the incident, right? Major, major incident. Right? If they can't cope, off, give them some rest and arrange some psychological support, right? Then after stand down of the major incident, right? Then you have to do a importantly you have to do a debriefing, right? About how you have done uh, perform this thing, right? So uh, first you have to ask um, whether every, everybody is okay. Then you have to tell, okay, we are going to do a debriefing for five minutes, right? Then you have to tell them that this is only to improve the quality of the patient care, not to blame anyone, right? So sometimes some people might be very tired, right? Then you can, you can't force them to stay. You can stay, okay? It's better if you can wait, but it's not compulsory, right? Then you have to say everything discussed here will be confidential, okay? Then you can start with summarizing the case, right? So, so we had uh, this sort of case. We got this sort of patients, right? We managed to um, then things that went, went well. So you can say, okay, we managed to uh, save all the patients, right? We managed uh, like that, right? Then you have to tell what are the opportunities to improve, right? What are how can we improve the uh, um, the thing if it, if it if it happened again, right? If there are any deficit, do we did we had any uh, problems with our stock? Any staff problem? Any space problem? Right? Then you have to think, discuss about those things. You can ask everybody. Okay, can you suggest to think how to improve the thing, right? Then. You can suggest those of, um, things um, to the stakeholders, right? Responsible people, right? So next time, take please they take these sections to avoid these things, right? Like that. So that is the debriefing after the incident. It's called hot debriefing. Okay, just after the incident, right? So uh, that is. Uh, how you have to manage a major, major incident, right? I hope uh, you must have get some got some idea about the, that, and I hope you will be able to manage the next incident if you get a one <laughs> to your hospital next time. Um, is a uh, are you there? No. Um, can you hear me? Yeah, um, so are there any questions? I can't see any messages. Is anything clear or? So basically, so these are the things that you have to know. I um, uh, have idea about the definitions, right? And uh, what are the type of um, major incidents you can have? What are the type of mass casualty incidents, right? About disaster management cycle, right? And about the triage, what are the types of triage? Primary triage, secondary triage. This is the most important thing, right? Triage categories. As soon as you see the color, red, yellow, green, you have to have an idea whether the patient can wait, have to wait, or can't wait. So then, maintain report. And about standby, declare, cancel, and stand down messages. And um, those are the basic stuff. So thank you uh, very much for that comprehensive lecture. 
Thank you. Welcome. Any questions? No? Sir, after how long we categorize, uh, retire the patient, each category mean uh, if we treatment getting delay? Uh, uh, that you have to allocate somebody, one person, to retry the patient depending on your resources, right? Um, I mean, um, there should be a one person who is going around every 15 minutes checking all the patients, right? Depending on the number of tech well, you can't say, you, I mean, to measure every 15 minutes because if there's like 50 casualties, right? If there's only two people, you can't, it will take some time, you know? Yes, sir. Just can delegate okay, somebody, nursing officer or doctor, to go around and see uh, whether the patients are all right, retriage and change the tanks, right? It's not just changing the tank, tanks, right? So, I mean, if the green person become yellow, you need to change the tank and you need to inform the relevant doctors to see this patient early. I mean, if a yellow green patient becomes yellow, that patient can wait, but still you need to review, no? Right? You, um, so you need to inform the relevant staff. Okay, this patient is now yellow, P2. Can you please take this patient to the major area and see this patient? Okay, thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir, once again for uh, your time and the knowledge you shared with us. We gain a lot of knowledge.